Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining in. This side, Rahul Magan here as a Chief Executive Officer of Tragedy Consulting LLP. And today we are touching another important topic in the field of foreign currency and the fourth technical video of the day, which is Japanese yen. A currency which was, is and would be termed as a volatility gauge across the globe. A currency which is doing the quantity easing from the last two decades. A currency which is scheduled uh, to do more quantity easing now because you very well understand that what Kuroda has said. Uh, Kuroda means uh, the current governor. But he said about his views towards, uh, uh, towards Japanese yen. So Japanese yen is moving towards very, very interesting times nowadays. Now, what do you mean by interesting time is Japanese yen is seriously evaluating more quantity easing, easing now. I am not sure the reason behind that. And I think majority of the market himself not sure about the reason behind the same. Because certainly we need to understand that uh, Japanese do not need more quantity easing, rather they need to stimulate the economy. Before moving further, I would like to highlight one important fact which was also sponsored by the chairman of the JP Morgan when he said that today central banks are stressed too much on monetary policy. He clearly mentioned that central banks uh, should, their job is to, to conduct the monetary policy while at the same time they should not think that they can stimulate their economy only doing monetary policy. And he was also uh, holding a view that we should not wait. Uh, do we, we, uh, today somebody is going to ask a question from us that what is an exact difference between an unorthodox or unconventional monetary policy versus a conventional monetary policy. Then majority of the central banks won't have an answer for that. Because from the last nine years, we are doing this. We are from the last nine years, we are doing this. And to be very honest, to be uh, and uh, to be very honest, we also need to appreciate one fact that Japanese are are seriously interested in doing more quantity easing, which will surely decrease the yield of uh, which will surely decrease the Japanese government yield. Now, if you see that, we will get to know that Japanese yield is trading ten-year Japanese yield is trading approximately minus six bips. And if more quantity easing would happen, which I am certainly sure that more quantity easing would surely happen, then in that says the yield might fall to minus 10 bips and it could go to minus 20 bips also. I might not, my, I might not be surprised in that. And if you look at the chart, which is right in front of you, is the one year chart. Now, in this one year chart, we first is going to implement, you know, the Bollinger Bands. Now, we will write here. Yeah, let us uh, first do the Bollinger Band width and then we will do Bollinger Bands, both Bollinger Band width and Bollinger Bands. Carefully see, I think a dummy person can see that this is a one year chart. And if we carefully see that the graph, the width of the graph is very high. It, and in Bollinger Bands, there is one thing which everybody is aware about that if the width of the graph would turn uneven, I will not say that it is wide because wide currently is, is not an unconventional word, it is a conventional word. It would continue to be wide, to be very honest. But if the width of the Bollinger Bands would continue to be uh, uneven, uneven I meant to say that uh, or continue to be wide, then there is an issue with this. Issue what I issue issue but what issue issue this the currency is facing a huge volatility which Japanese yen is facing. There is no doubt that Japanese yen is not facing a, a huge volatility. Plus one thing I would like to stress more here. Now let me reduce the width the Bollinger Bands from 20 because here is taking the medium average of 20. Here I will reduce this to I would say 10. Deliberately I will reduce this to 10. And I want to see now if you carefully see that 10 day moving average would suffice this chart then our 20 day moving average. Now I am going to make a strategic game. I am going to reduce this from 1 standard 2 stand, plus minus 2 standard deviation to plus minus 1 standard deviation and then we will see how, how the things would be. We would be here with 
वन स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन एंड हेयर वी वुड बी वन स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन एंड वी वुड क्लिक हेयर नाउ यू कैन वेरी वेल सी देशर ऑफ द चार्ट एग्जैक्टली यू कैन सी द नेचर ऑफ द चार्ट वन स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन डू नॉट सफाइज द जैपनीज एम कव so you would have a 10 day moving average first i i need to reduce this to 10 day moving average and then what i did and then i reduce then i uh, decrease the volatility component from 10 day moving average to sorry from one standard deviation to one from two standard deviation to one standard deviation now you can very carefully see that it is not sinking with the chart which effectively means that japanese yen over the last one year which is you are sitting approximately october 2016 from october 2015 from october 2015 to october 2015 to october 2016 japanese yen is having volatility of greater than one standard deviation now what i am going to do i am going to reduce this to one and half to increase this to One and half, and let me see how it would be. I'm not sure how this Bollinger Bands would perform. Like I will say, one point five. Yeah, take it uh, to downstairs. I will take it as minus two. Click here. Now you can see. Now you can see that the upper one it could be one point five standard deviation plus side, and the lower one would be minus two standard deviation on the. negative side this is what exactly which is happening with the japanese yen and the all credit will go to the huge quantity easing and the emotional attitude of the market central bank ready to do again a set of quantity easing i am not sure what would be the amount and on the other hand the markets are getting emotionally uh, full you know they sh they should have uh, you know decreased japanese yen to to 98 to 99 rather what they are doing they are increasing it to 104 so it means to say that if if the exporter of the tokyo who is who is exporting 1000 dollars of the good he was expecting that this would decrease to 98 to 99 now the same exporter is making a sense that it has increased to 104 now because sitting today japanese yen is trading at 103.88 which effectively means that it would go higher as simple as that which effectively means that it would go higher so japanese yen is a correct combination of the stuff and i think the japanese yen um, is uh, moving towards uh, a wrong direction and the personal opinion of the tragic consulting llp would be is to have a short call on the japanese yen approximately 104.5 I seriously need to uh, share uh, or agree with the fact that when the currency is turned out to be the emotionally sentimental currency than a fundamental currency, then in that sense you need to go with the strict stop loss because uh, if you are selling Japanese yen at 104 and suppose it went down to uh, it went up to 105.5. then i think your stop loss will breach and if your stop loss will breach the breach then you have to you do have to just wind up your trade in the market so in that regards i would certainly feel that you would have a strict stop loss and before winding up we would like to show you one more which is relative strength index on uh, japanese yen now here we go in the relative strength index and in the relative strength index it is clearly visible that it is a sell call not now but but the later on like here here it is said that it is a sell call the market went down here it it said that uh, you know it is to an extent a sell call here also it said that it is uh, it is to an extent a sell so i think uh, let's just cancel this and work only on the relative strength index and here and here also i think that here i think it is moving towards 75 because current relative strength index is 50 and relative strength index of 50 will stress that it is neither sell and neither buy but i personally feel that it should be a buy call uh, so it should be a sell call approximately 105 japanese yen per dollar and also a stress time for the exporters because exporters need to take up a call that which all derivative instrument they are supposed to use to 
uh, you know uh, to hedge their uh, portfolio because Japanese yen is uh, is getting a little stronger. Uh, so this was the purpose of the videos to give you an introduction of the Japanese yen. And also at the same time, we would like to stress one fact that uh, uh, the unconventional monetary policies by the respective central banks would continue. And I think China is facing a Minsky movement now and uh, I'm not sure whether they would be able to caught by the Minsky movement or they would be able to clear that Minsky movement. I'm not sure about this, but China is facing a Minsky, Minsky movement. Across the globe, central banks are following the unconventional monetary policies and they are doing huge amount of quantitative easing. And uh, in that regards, uh, you know, your uh, Indian Central Bank, Reserve Bank of India is one of that. A uh, couple of days ago, we had a policy about Australia where the, where the Bay, when the current governor Phillips decided not to decrease the rate, this was the wisest decision we taken because we need to think about the carry also. But before winding up, I would like to stress one fact very carefully that if we continue to decrease the interest rate in Tokyo, say because the 10 year yield is minus 6, minus 6 bips, it might go to minus 10 bips, it might go to minus 15 bips and so on and so forth. In that regards, there is a big opportunity for the funding carry for the traders across the globe. Because there was a time when Japanese word zero was zero. Now they are minus. So if I pay a little amount to Tokyo and from little amount I am able to make good dollars in uh, those currencies which are, which, are, which are in carry like, like India, Canada, Australia, Indonesia, Singapore also and like this then there is nothing harm in this. So rising uh, Japanese yen is uh, of course a very good news for Japanese exporters, not a very good and bad, not very good news for Japanese importers. In fact, they were they should expect that it will it went down to 98. And at the same time, we need to evaluate the implied walls in Japanese yen, which I guess money or walls must be trading greater than 10%. And also at the same time, we need to evaluate that. Also, we need to evaluate the carry trade phenomena in the Japanese uh, if the interest rate would further decline from minus 6 bips to minus 10 bips. So, we thank you very much and uh, we love to bring more videos about the technical and technical analysis to you. We soon bring up a video which is which is uh, which would be covering more advanced techniques of technical analysis. So we thank you and uh, we love to see you soon and we also uh, would like to update you that our website is ready and we are launching our website very soon probably by next week our website would be in the public domain and uh, you would be able to contact us very easily then. So we say thank you to you and you know our contact which is treasuryconsultingllp at the rate gmail.com and rahulmagan8 at the rate gmail.com. We thank you and uh, have a great day.